Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Alright, pack one, pick one. Opened a Garrick's Harbinger. Pretty decent card, especially if you've got some ways of giving a trample or other pump spells. So it plays quite well with the three mana enchantment in green. That gives creatures trample and draws cards. But there is also Watch of the Spheres, which is, I think, the best of the multicolor payoffs. And yeah, flyers are good, and this is a good pick for the blue white flyers archetype. There's also Basri's Acolyte, which is less of a commitment to a two-color pair and still a very good card. So I think you can make a case for Harbinger, Watcher and Acolyte in this pack. Nothing else really comes close. I think I take Watcher and we'll see if we can draft a blue-white Flyers deck with a early Watcher of the Spheres. Another pack with a bunch of options. Shipwreck Dowser seems like one of the better options. It is funny that we opened the green Sanctum and now we had the blue Sanctum, so could have been a fun start for a Sanctum deck. But uh, Shipwreck Dowser seems great. There's the Charger as a fine two drop. Spellgorger weird, fine red card, but I think we want to stick to blue white. Had we taken the Harbinger, then I think I also would have taken Dowser second pick here over Titanic Growth. And uh, what do we have here? The Houndmaster for the red white deck. Alongside the Watchdog to search up. Don't hate a Capture Sphere as removal here. Shock's also decent. But I think we want to stick to blue whites and. Not a huge fan of Lofty Denial, but if we do end up with enough cheap flyers, it could be okay. Now Sphere, not something I can get back with a Dowser, so that's not the best synergy. But both Opt and Strike I can get back, although there's also Quaddle in the pack. And I could easily pivot in blue-green and take the Quaddle. Now we did pass Garrick's Harbinger, so the person to our left is likely green. There's also Grasp of Darkness as a consideration. So I think Grasp, Opt and Quaddle are all reasonable. I think I'm just taking Quaddle and then we can either be blue-green or blue-white depending on what's more open. There's a pretty late Deathbloom Salad, which I'm definitely a fan of. Nothing amazing for us. Can say the Resistance for blue-white. Or we can take like a Truffle Snout or Mauler for blue-green. Probably prefer Truffle Snout, Mauler better in black-green. Yeah, let's take the Snouts. And now we can take the Singer, which doesn't commit us to green or white yet. And of course would fit nicely in the blue-white archetype. Replicator definitely plays well with the Watchdog and the Houndmaster if you can get multiple Watchdogs. But, uh, yeah, Steak Singer. Another Capture Sphere seems fine. So blue seems open. Second color still up for grabs. Guess I'll take a Gnarled Sage. Over Cancel. And Rookie Mistake. Do want to start picking up some more instants and Sorceries to go with the Dowser. So that Opt that we passed up would have been pretty nice with Dowser and, of course, a Quaddle. But, uh... Take a Sage and see where this leads. Green also seems to be flowing. Don't hate Spinner. The Flyers seem to be pretty popular, so having a good 2-drop that protects us against Flyers is nice. Although there is also Blossoming Sands. Could maybe splash a bit of white, which is not out of the question. Yeah, I guess there's a chance we get another spinner later. I think we saw another one that we might wheel. Take Tranquil Cove now over Charger. And then we have two ways of potentially splashing Watcher. Or maybe we end up blue-white and splash the Quaddle. I'll take the Watchdog over the Mutts, but both are reasonable here. It's just that we already have some fives. 
All right, so... Probably not playing the Gorhorn. So moving into the second pack, blue seemed to be flowing, but second color is still undecided. Could maybe splash one of them. And open a pretty good rare, but there's also Tide Skimmer, which would definitely be quite good in this deck. A Rousing Reed, there's a Bastard's Acolyte. It's a pretty strong pack. Sticking to a blue or a colorless card makes more sense than taking Acolyte, since we're not sure if we're white yet. So, Tome versus Skimmer. How many flyers do we have? Not that many. It's probably just Tome. But there's a few cards we can hope to wheel out of that pack. Rada, pretty strong, but not really in a position to take it. I do like Gale Swooper quite a bit. And then we can hope to wield the Thornwood Falls. Probably not going to be playing 9 lives. Although I could just rare draft it. What am I missing out on? Trading I'm probably not going to play if I'm splashing green. Enforcer's okay, but it's replaceable. Yeah, I'll just rare draft. Alright, there's an opt that I wanted to pair with the Shipwreck Dowser. Also a way of enabling prowess for the singer, so it's pretty good in this deck. Now, if I'm going to be playing white as my main color, a 2-drop like Charger could be decent. Don't have the best synergy for Ascension, even though the card's okay. This is better if we have some expendable creatures to exile. Which we don't really. Just taking the opts. At this point I'm leaning a lot more towards being blue-white with maybe a green splash than anything else. And a Concordia Pegasus is a fine 2-drop. Probably don't have the best Jeskai Elder deck. Pretty good with a turn 3 Rousing Reed. Steed is a fine 5 drop. If we're not playing green, then we have a bit of room once the Sage is gone. And I'll rare draft again. Missing out on a Watchdog, which would have been fine. The fine strike, I guess, combos with the Dowser, but we might pick up another copy later. Alright, I already have my play set of Peer into the Abyss, so don't need to rare draft it here. But another Pegasus seems fine, Dub and Frost Breath also considerations. So, maybe I splash the Quaddle, but otherwise we're just a blue-white deck. Oh wow, we wield the Skimmer. Definitely looking very strong now that we've got all these cheap flyers. Take a shield mate, but I doubt I'm playing it. Have two of them just in case we pick up that uh, replicator. And I might play one read the tides. So heading into the last pack. Don't think I'm likely to splash the green for just Quaddle. So I've got 14 playables, so we're definitely going to need to make sure that we uh, don't miss on too many playables. I could always play the Shieldmate if I have to, Rune Halo, or uh, Larsenus could make the cuts if we really need another playable. Easy Acolyte now. Still don't think we're a great Jeskai Elder deck. Inventory... We only have the one copy if we take it, but it is something to get back with Dowser. I might actually prefer Feet of Resistance as a combo trick to save our flyers. And I can also get it back with Dowser. 
might wield the Frost Breath, which I might play too. Ooh, Enthralling Hold. Don't mind if I do. Couple of options here. I am a fan of the Chorister, although this might not be the best deck for it. Solidarity, nice way to pump the entire team. Great if we have a bunch of cheap flyers in play. The Mirror can be a way of ramping into our more expensive cards. And we could use another 3-drop, so looking at the curve, I think it's Mirror here. Take a Charger. Also great with turn 2 Concordia Pegasus. Defiant Strike would be okay as another instant to get back with Dowser to enable Prowess as well. Or we could take a dub to put on our two mana flyers. There's a chance we still wheel one of those dubs. I think I take strike. I think we've got enough two mana creatures now. Another Pegasus and a Reign of Revelation and another Capture Sphere. I've got a lot of 4-drops already, I think I'm just taking Pegasus. Looking at the curve here, Pegasus is great with the Watcher of the Spheres, it's great with Acolyte, great with the Tide Skimmer, so it's got a lot going for it. Battalion would also be a fine 3-drop to fill out the curve, so that would also be a fine pickup here. Do you like me a Rousing Reed in this deck? Seems okay. Not really a cancel deck, we're tapping out for the most part. Could play a couple shield mates. Both dub and frost breath wield. I'll take a dub. More shield mates. And we wield the mutts, might play one of them. Alright, so our deck is fine. Did not pick up any of the 5 mana common flyer in blue. So, looking at our creatures. Yeah, I don't think I can cut any creatures here, we're pretty creature light as is. And Dub and Rousing Reed also rely on us having creatures in the first place. Could ditch the Read the Tides. We have Tome, 4 card draw, Rousing Reed filters a bit, we've got Opt and Defiant Strike plus Dowser, and then play 17 lands, we do have quite a few 4s and 5s. And then the Splits, slightly more white and blue. Although we do need double blue for hold and dowser. 9-7 plus a tranquil cove seems fine. Alright, let's go. So Opt wants to find some powerful play we can make on turn 4 after we play the mirror. So 5 drop would be ideal. Bottom of Pegasus for now. The Fairy's Tutelage, alright, so we know what our opponent's plan is, and we have to try and kill them before that mills us. Not the best uh, draw so far, 
So we'll start with Strike and then hope to pick up something we can cast with Mirror, otherwise we can attack with it. Nice, Skimmer. So I can play Skimmer, play Tranquil Cove. Although I have to be a little careful, because drawing cards against the mill deck does come with a drawback. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maze Mind's Tomb. So I probably attack first, including the mirror, and then draw with Skimmer and Pegasus. And then I can scry in the turn if we don't draw something expensive we want to cast here. Eighteen cards remaining. That's about to go down to fourteen. That draws two. So we're pretty much dead here. Yeah, I don't think we can kill them in time. Well, that was fast. That doesn't technically draw a card, at least. Yeah, our hand was fine, but instead of Pegasus we needed 3-1 to apply a bit more pressure. And we ended up with a lot of mana and not much to spend that mana on. Didn't really line up great against the tutelage. Alright, I, I can scry my top card here. A rousing reed. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I can uh, cast that here. And my other card is known. It's a Pegasus that we scry to the bottom at the start. Can I draw myself to death? I maybe should have. Well, mono blue combo is a thing, but that was definitely a pretty uh, strong draw from our opponent. And the problem with the tutelage deck is if you have like two tutelages, but you don't draw them until very late in the game, then uh, they're not very useful, but turn three and turn four is where you want them. This draw is not great. But some decks might not be able to deal with a uh, doped Pegasus. Alright, let's jam this Acolyte and hope it resolves. Trades for the Charger. 
just chumps instead. Interesting. Transmogrify, wow. I didn't think that was quite worth the investment there. But it might just be me. Alright, what am I doing here? I uh, can just capture Spirit and Smash, that seems fine. Bounce as a singer, all right. So I can dub the charger here. Forces a chum block, opponent takes four. And they're in trouble. Alright, the Mutt would have been nice against the Tulage deck. Fine hands. I think I do cast Opt turn 1 instead of holding it for prowess, because we do want to find a 2-drop. So we can potentially curve out. A red-black. There's a 2-drop, it doesn't line up great against the Powerling, but I think it's still good enough. I guess we'll Pegasus first, and then can maybe use a Charger later to pump a Flyer. Also sets up turn 4 Skimmer drawing a card right away, which is pretty sweet. So, do I attack? Yeah, I don't think so. Not sure if I want to block the Paradling yet, but I want to leave myself the option. Alright. That's a neat combo. Otherwise, if they attacked, I could have blocked with Pegasus and they could have finished off Pegasus, but I guess getting in for 6 damage is pretty good too. So as much as I want to play Tight Skimmer, I might be forced to capture Sphere the Powerling instead. Or am I? I mean, how many more ways of enabling it do they have? Nah, we'll, we'll tight skimmer. Ooh, this could be a nice answer. Bit of a risky block, but even if they I'm the paralling here, that's okay. If they wanted to kill the skimmer, they should have shocked face. And I think the skimmer is more valuable than the singer, so a bit of a strange play. So I could steal one of their creatures, probably the archer, although we don't know how much 
they can uh, enable the paddling. Or I could just uh, play Charger and Dub and get in for a bunch of damage. Dowser has opt to get back. So playing Dowser and then trading for Archer could also be fine. So we got some options. I kind of like playing Charger because it sets up to trade for the Skeleton Archer and then if they move the Scythe I can block the Paraling instead and then steal the Archer next turn with Hold. Could also attack first, see what I draw and then play Dub second main on the Charger. Instead of playing it now, let's see, 5 points at 17. It does increase my clock quite a bit. Now there's definitely a sequence of plays that could kill me here. Pyroling is a scary card. But we do put ourselves in a pretty good spot if they don't. So I expect him to move the scythe to the archer. And that sets up hold stealing the archer with the equipment that they then have to pay additional mana to move. Just sends the paraling. Alright, I guess I'll take it then. So I can't steal the archer with hold, but I can capture spirits. And then I want to keep my white man untapped in case I draw lands. Now the question is, do we keep charger back or not? Perfect. All right, sweet. Decent hands, nice curve of flyers into a tight skimmer, which we got pretty lucky to wheel. Definitely did not expect it to. Again, might be interested in uh, cycling the Defined Strike, but we might not have a target. Lots of ways to enable prowess and plenty of cards to get back with Dowser here. Although I would like to hit my fourth land drop for Skimmer. All right, I think we have to trade here. I'll keep Pegasus back if they kill Skimmer. I want to block the Hounds. And one damage is probably not worth it. Opponent on Jeskai. Right, let's see if we get to attack. Might be a capture sphere, nope. Land would be great. Sure. Oh, 
Well, could take a lot of damage next turn. So probably need to opt to try and find some answers. Yeah, I don't think I, I can keep a third 5-drop here or fourth 5-drop. We've drawn all the 5-drops in the deck. Alright, it's something. Can trade for the Bolt Hounds. Opponent looking at the graveyard, they might have the Is it uh, uncommon. Yep, there it is. Yeah, those goblin tokens are gonna deal quite a bit of damage here. And now we have a bit of a problem. Land 5 comes into play tapped, so I could attack hoping to find a land and then playing Valor Steed would be quite strong. But if we miss, then uh, we could easily die on the way back. I think I go for it. Alright, not the best, but I guess it's a blocker. So, only taking two here, it's not too bad. And this turn, I get to send Super and Pegasus, keep the 2 3 on defense, play Valor Steed, and keep up the Fine Strike. The Mutt can kill Simulacrum, but that also draws him a card, so I'm fine just playing two blockers instead here. So we're definitely pulling ahead on card advantage, thanks to the Skimmer. And green mana too, going deep. So, this goes there, this goes here, and then I could use the Fine Strike to trade for Simulacrum on the Skimmer, but I don't know if that's quite worth it here. So I might just take three. Yeah, this seems fine. They could trample for one if they sack a token. But I'm probably cycling the Defiant Strike. Or am I? I guess I wouldn't necessarily be able to play anything else if I play a 5-drop next turn. Or I can play the Douster, get back opt, but I think now I'm pretty happy killing the 3-3 three -three with Mutts. So unless I draw 2-drop, I would rather just keep up Strike. And it draw 2-drop. Still okay. So do we want to just play defense here? I don't have to attack with my Flyers this turn. Yeah, let's just Turtle up. I 
I might be able to set up a lethal attack by going Defiant Strike, Dowser, Replay, Defiant Strike. Or Rousing Read, I guess, works too. So I just need to survive this turn, not lose any flyers, and next turn I can attack back for lethal. Thanks for two. Could be a sure strike, so I don't really want to block with more. They might have also just wanted to gain two life so they don't die on the crackback. It could definitely be sketchy to go for lethal here if they have some removal and then are able to attack me back for lethal. But let's see. Points at 13. Let's say a rising read on the mutts. Gives it one additional power, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 12, and then strike is lethal. I think that's worth it. But we'll see first what we draw. Alright, so I've got an extra blocker, so I don't die necessarily. They could have two mana destroyed tapped creature. Right, let's go for it. Sweet. This hand's pretty slow, but it is potentially powerful. It does require a second blue source. Yeah, if I could swap a 5-drop with a 2-drop, it would look much better. But I think I still keep on the draw, so hopefully we can find a 2-drop in time. That definitely helps with finding lands. Planes. Yeah, I guess I'll keep planes. It's no islands, but I'll need five lands total. So I'm not going to be too picky. Now I'll bottom the planes. There we go. Probably don't need to scry an upkeep anymore. Find target for enthralling hold. Who? They made it even juicier. Oh yes. And they're just dead here to the Capture Sphere. Alright. Enthralling Hold definitely showing its uh, high upside potential.
and also seeing Tome smooth out our draws. Probably bottom the planes. Looking for a three drop. That also works. Next turn, two and plus Pegasus, hopefully. And definitely into just crying to find a relevant play next turn. How good is Pegasus here? It's okay. Definitely have more impactful cards in the deck. I'll be greedy. Alright. That's definitely a nice one. So that I'm going to capture Sphere, don't have the mana to draw with Tome, so I guess I might scry for the following turn, but I can do that end of turn. Yeah, that was a pretty brutal curve out, and seeing the power of Watcher of the Spheres. Turn to Watcher again, don't mind if I do. Don't have much in the middle part of the curve here, and we'll need a couple lands for Steed and Hold, but we do have Tome to help there too. And especially in a fast format where games end before you empty your hands, being able to scry to improve your draws early on seems incredibly important. Alright, Harbinger is scary. I'll give him that. but I'll probably have to take a hit. Could double block, but there's so many ways that that goes wrong. And hopefully play Akali next turn. Take it. Might be able to enthralling hold this at some point too. Immolator can kill my Watcher, but goes for the officer instead. Essentially a 4-4 death touch on offense. Land is good. The Acolyte can block the Igneous Cur. Yeah, let's see, what if I keep back Pegasus here? I can double block the Harbinger. Pretty likely to draw land 5 for Enthralling Holds. So, let's say I do send for 5. And then next turn block Kerr, take 8. Down to 7. And then Enthralling Hold, that still seems decent. A 
assuming they attack with Igneous Cur, they might not. Death Touch plus Trample, so I might steal the Lophosaur instead of the Harbinger now. Take nine. That's a good one. Yeah, we're probably behind here. Harbinger putting in a ton of work. I will gain four from Tome next turn at least. Plants probably just steal the Dilophosaur at this point. Because they will have the Ogre to enable this again, so it's going to be a 5 5 Death Touch Trampler again. And then I don't think I can afford to attack. So I do have some life gain incoming at least. Alright, no attacks. So probably just take my draw step, since I'm gonna play Steed here. And I might end up uh, drawing a card with Tome instead. But I can always scry at instant speed to gain 4 life. No attacks. Alright, so we've got a bit of a board stall now, I guess. That seems good. So I could draw first with the Tome and then Rousing Reed to have more card selection in case I draw lands. Could also target Acolyte, I guess, to gain a bit of life and kind of force a trade on Ogre. Might be better. And Capture Sphere is great. Could discard Singer and then play Charger to pump the Acolyte here. Don't hate that idea. Gain a big chunk of life. Put me out of harm's way. And this pretty much forces a trade. And then we can try and take over with the remaining flyers. Capture Sphere can tap down Ogre. Do I send both flyers here, put them to seven? I have four blockers back. I guess I'll just send the watcher instead. 
anyone else attack Valor Steed. They can just trade for the Igneous Cur. We'll just send a Watcher here. And then we can maybe make it a two turn clock, especially if we draw another blocker. Opponent's feeling a bit desperate, maybe. So Death Touch can trade for Death Touch. 3 1 can trade for Harbinger, doesn't trample. Truffle Snout does trample. So I can block that with. The Steed, I do have to watch out for Immolator killing a blocker and then a Trampler trampling over, potentially. So how's this? This trades, this trades. This forces the issue on the Immolator. This trades, this trades. Are there any better blocks? Yeah, this is fine. So they're gonna save the Igneous Cur instead. Sure. Yeah. Alright. So I can't really attack with both here, otherwise Igneous Cur kills me. It's also risky against a single removal spell if I attack with Watcher of the Spheres. But if I do nothing, I also give them more time. So I don't mind just sending the Watcher. Alright, center opponent packs it in. That was a close one. And the tome once again putting in quite a bit of work. Time for the final boss. After losing the first round to the blue mill deck, the other loss was where we couldn't find our blue mana. So overall our deck's been performing quite well. And yeah, nice uh, draw with Watcher once again. I'm keeping. Oh no. That's unfortunate. Next turn we can Rousing Reed, maybe discard one of the fives. Some fine attacking with all. They can trade for the Watcher of the Spheres, essentially. Don't have anything to get back with Dowser right now. Alright, now all of a sudden they have a 2-3. Lines up quite a bit better. So I can still attack to get in one damage. And then probably play the Mutt here instead of the Swooper. <laughs> Alright, opponent came prepared for the blue-white flyers. If that much is clear. 
Although that's going to be a nice one. So this turn I want to try and set up Feet of Resistance, so next turn I can buy it back with Dowser. So do I just send the Mutts? Or do I send a 2-4 Pegasus? I think I'm fine sending the 2-4 as well. Five mana. And a Leafkin Avenger. Okay. They might have a shock in hand. Capture Sphere, not a bad draw. So I could Swooper, give Mud Flying, and then if I attack with everyone, let's say they do have a shock in hand, then they could block the Mutts and shock it, or block the Pegasus and shock it, but then they're taking 6 or they're taking 4. Seems fine. And then next turn we can Sphere. They could of course shock the Swooper, but then they're taking quite a bit of damage. Down to one. And shock to finish off Pegasus. So they're maybe looking to kill Swooper by activating Sniper twice. Another Hunter's Edge, but this Capture Sphere should do it. All right, sweet. Our first pick definitely paid off. Give ourselves the option of maybe ending up in green, but blue-white seemed to be the place to be. Got some nice curve-out draws. And uh, yeah, lost a game to the mono-blue mill deck, which seemed very strong. And then a game where we didn't find our blue mana, so can't complain. Had that game with a skimmer where we got to draw a lot of cards. Acolyte, as always. A great card, especially with all these cheap flyers. Got to play Charger Pumping Pegasus a few times. That seemed like a common play. And the one game where we got to steal the opponent's Tiger with Enthralling Hold was pretty great too. So, yeah, even if you don't have much removal, a blue-white flyers deck can be pretty tough to deal with. And then uh, a rare like Tome can be a nice way to smooth out your draws. Let's crack some packs. Liliana's Standard Bearer, decent card. Could easily be the pick here, although... Yeah, if the Blue-White Flyers archetype is a real thing, then Wingmare could be a fine pickup too. Sublime Epiphany had that in our previous drafts, absolute bomb. Best blue card in the entire sets by far. Azusa, not so much. This pack is not super exciting. Probably take like a shock. Augur can be decent in the blue-red archetypes. Inventory can be pretty nice in a variety of decks, including blue-red or the blue-green Draw Matters deck, or if you get lucky enough to open two tutelages like our opponent did, it can be nice in the mill deck. Elder Gargaroth, 
we keep opening all these bomb mythics in our prize packs instead of in the drafts, but uh, yeah, this is a pretty good one. On the same level as uh, Baneslayer, if not better. And Volcanic Salvo. Seems like a pretty strong card too. You do need a bit of a board before you can uh, make use of it, but it's usually going to be a nice 2 for 1 killing the two largest creatures on the opponent's side. And uh, given that the format is pretty fast and you want to get on the board quickly, you should be able to cast this around turn 5, turn 6 at the latest. Alright, that was a fun draft. So blue-white, two drafts in a row where we managed to get 7 wins. Might be one of the better archetypes starting out here. So we might see an increase of snare spinners to hold off those annoying flyers. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.